And recently, uh, studying from the book of Daniel, back in the Old Testament, and looking at a series of lessons, there are actually quite a handful of important lessons we can find in the events that took place in the book of Daniel. And one of those events, or one of the lessons that really stood out to me, has really stuck with me, and I hope will be helpful to you as well, is what we see in the very first chapter in Daniel chapter 1. A lot of times we talk about uh, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah in Daniel chapter 3, and they're not bowing down to the image, and that's a really good one and a good lesson. Also, Daniel 6, we talk about, you know, when Daniel prayed to God anyway, even though he was you know, going to be thrown into the lion's den, and that's a good one. Both of those great examples of faith. But there's also, from the very beginning, if 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 we're not careful, we can just kind of pass over it. And maybe you haven't, uh, but I think sometimes we can. And it's in Daniel chapter 1, when Daniel and his three friends, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, and others are taken into Babylonian captivity. They're taken away from everything they've known, from their families, uh, even from, you know, where they worship and all kinds of things. And to a foreign land where they're going to be taught a foreign language and foreign laws and all kinds of different things. And one of the things we read in Daniel chapter 1 verse 5 is that the king of Babylon appointed for them a daily provision of the king's delicacies and of the wine which he drank. And they were going to be trained for three years and so on and so forth and then serve the king. There's a very important point here in Daniel chapter 1. And that's in verse 8. So here they are. Daniel and his three friends and others with them are taken into Babylon, taken into captivity. Can't imagine how horrifying of an experience that must have been away from their families, away from everything they've known spiritually, religiously. They're, gonna, they're basically being forced into training in a foreign land. They're going to be given the king's delicacies and wine. But, verse 8, Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. And you go on to read and how God gave him favor in the eyes of the chief of the eunuchs. And the chapter goes on to talk about how Daniel requests vegetables instead and God, you know, makes that all go well, and it turns out good for Daniel and his three friends. But the fact that Daniel and that the Daniel purposed in his heart, and I kind of have a feeling that his, that Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah were were right there with him. But what we are told is that Daniel purposed in his heart. He determined. From the get-go, before they even got there, in that situation, and being thrown in that, to that situation, Daniel determined in his heart, made a choice, that no matter what, he was not going to defile, allow himself to be defiled. That was based on his character spiritually, his faith in God. Now, what's powerful about that, too, is... What we as human beings are really good at is making excuses and justifying our actions. Daniel and his friends could have easily excused themselves, made, you know, justified their actions, saying, you know, this is a hard situation. We've been taken away from our homes and family. We've, we're, we're, we're not even, you know, uh, with our, our people spiritually, religiously to worship and all of those things. You know, we're being offered these things. Uh, this is a bad situation. Let's just, let's just go ahead and have the king's delicacies and wine. We, we need to at least just, no, we, one, we, we just need to go along with everything so we don't get in trouble and be killed. Or two, you know, 
I didn't sign up for this, so I'm going to enjoy whatever I can. I mean, they could have made a bunch of excuses to allow themselves to have the things the king was wanting them to have. But they were willing to risk their life, risk getting in trouble. And I believe without the providential care and oversight of God in this situation, they certainly would have gotten in trouble. But God kept that from happening. But it started with their faith. That Daniel purposed in his heart that he was not going to defile himself. I think the lesson for us today is pretty clear. The question is, am I, as a child of God, as a follower of Jesus Christ, my Savior, am I purposing in my heart to not defile myself with sin, with the sinful things that I have repented of, with the sinful things all around us in this world? Am I daily purposing in my heart, making a decisive choice, that I am determined that I will not allow myself to be defiled with the sins of this world. When temptation, because temptations are going to come. We're going to be put in situations where we're, our faith in righteousness is going to be tested and tried. We're going to be tempted. We're going to be put in situations where it's going to e be easy for us to make excuses, justify our choices. That's what sa Satan wants us to Ah, just, you know, give in, go with it. But we need to be like Daniel. I need to be like Daniel. I need to purpose in my heart. I need to be determined, motivated, diligent, that I am going to fight with every fiber in my, in my being. I'm going to fight against sin. I'm going to fight against Satan. I do not want to allow myself to be defiled with sin. And so I am going to make an active choice daily to not choose sin over God. I am going to choose God over sin. And I am determined to do that. But it starts with our faith. It starts with our heart. It's not going to happen by accident. If we're not preparing our hearts, if we're not preparing ourselves before we get in these situations, we're setting ourselves up for failure. That's why the best time to get our hearts ready, to purpose in our hearts, determine in our hearts that we're going to choose to do what is right in the eyes of God is before we ever face temptation. So that when temptations come and then we got to make a choice. Do I give in? Do I overcome? What do I do? Let's purpose in our hearts not to defile ourselves. That's what sin does. It defiles us. Don't let it. Say no to temptation and sin. No matter the consequences, no matter how hard it is. Purpose in your heart to live for God daily. To love God above all else. To love God and His righteousness more than the pleasures of sin. God bless.